Another way in which we can know is the fact of archaeology. The spate of the archaeologists has turned up many things that have proven that it is the Word of God. Now, for instance, there are those that many years denied the Mosaic authorship of the Pentateuch on the basis that writing was not in existence in Moses' day, and for that reason why he could not have written the Pentateuch. You haven't heard anyone advance that theory recently, have you? Well, of course not. Now, for years, the spade of the archaeologists has turned up writing that goes much farther back than Moses, so that is no longer a valid argument. And then we find that the spate of the archaeologists has turned up again and again evidence of that, the city of Jericho and the walls that fell down. Now, there has been some argument between Miss Kellogg and the Englishman who first excavated there, but I think that it's pretty well established that walls fell down and I'll let them debate about the time and all that sort of thing, I believe that the Word of God has been substantiated there, and in many other ways, archaeology has demonstrated the accuracy of the Word of God, and many of the manuscripts that have been found do that. It's quite interesting when these Isaiah scrolls, Dead Sea Scrolls, were found, by the liberal leaped at that because he thought he'd found an argument that would discredit the Bible. It's quite interesting how it has not discredited the Bible, and it seems that the liberal has lost a great deal of interest in the scrolls, the Dead Sea Scrolls that were found. There are many ways in which we could go into this. This is a field into which I do not care to enter at any great length. Now, I want to give a reason if I were asked, what do you have as a conclusive proof? You just had one thing to suggest. What would you suggest as be a conclusive proof that this is the Word of God? And you know what I would suggest? I would suggest fulfilled prophecy. Fulfilled prophecy. I believe that that is the one proof that you can't escape. You can't get around. And the Bible is filled with fulfilled prophecy. One-fourth of the Scripture, when it was written, was prophetic, was prophecy. That is, it announced things that were to take place in the future. Well, a great deal of that, in fact, a great deal more than people imagine, has already been fulfilled. Again, we could turn to many places where this has been fulfilled exactly. You'll find that there were many local situations that were fulfilled even in the day of the prophet. Micaiah was a prophet who told Olahab that when he went out to battle, he'd lose the battle and he'd be killed. And Olahab didn't like it because his false prophets had told him he'd have a victory and he'd return as a victorious king. But he didn't like what Micaiah said, and he said, lock him up. Feed him water and bread. That's all you give him. And I'll take care of him when I get back. And Micaiah shot back the last word. He said, if you come back, the Lord hasn't spoken by me. Well, evidently the Lord spoke by him because Ahab didn't come back. He was killed in the battle. He was defeated. And he attempted to camouflage himself. But you see, a soldier, one of the enemy, the Scripture says he pulled a bow at a venture. That is, when the battle was about over, why, he just had one arrow left in his quiver, and he just put it in there, and he just shot it out in space. But you know, that arrow had old Ahab's name on it, and that arrow wandered around, went around trees and around rocks and down this road and up this path and finally found old Ahab. The only thing is it didn't do it quite that way. It just went right to its mark like an arrow. Why? Because Micaiah had made an accurate prophecy. 
And Isaiah, in the same connection, said the Assyrian wouldn't shoot an arrow into the city of Jerusalem. Well, now that's interesting. A soldier shot an arrow by chance, a bow at a venture. And wouldn't you think that among 300,000 soldiers that one might be trigger happy and pull the bow back and there would be the bow at a venture and he'd let an arrow fly over the wall of Jerusalem? Well, he didn't. Isaiah said that if the enemy shoots an arrow inside this city, you can be sure that I am not God's prophet. May I say to you, those were local fulfillments of prophecy. But Isaiah also said a virgin would bring forth a child. And that was 700 years away before it was literally fulfilled. And then if you want a final proof, there were over 300 prophecies concerning the first coming of Christ. They were all literally fulfilled. He was hanging there on the cross and dying, and there was one prophecy that had not been fulfilled, and that was, they gave me vinegar to drink. And he cried out, I thirst, and the enemy himself went and fulfilled prophecy. May I say to you, it's the most amazing thing, but man can't guess like that. It's been rather amusing to watch the weatherman. During the summer season in Southern California, he does fine. But when we get to the change of seasons, well, your guess is as good as his. He doesn't always hit it. Now, in the nation Israel, a prophet had to be accurate. And if he wasn't accurate, why, he would be put to death. God said that you always know that a thing has to come to pass, that he says. He asked, first of all, to speak into a local situation, which Isaiah did. And then he can speak out yonder to the future, as Isaiah did. We can look back and know that it was fulfilled. But there are so many other prophecies. Tyre and Sidon are over there today exactly. As God's Word said 2,500 years ago, they'd be. And there they are. And may I say to you that Egypt today is in exactly the position God said it would be in. All of these are amazing, friends, and that's one of the greatest proofs. You see, man just can't be that accurate. Man can't guess like that. As we said, the weatherman misses it. Let me show you that actually, according to mathematical law, a mathematical law of problematical conjecture, why man could never, never prophesy. Now let me give you just a very simple illustration of this. Suppose that I right now would make a prophecy. I don't know where you are, and I don't know what the weather is, but suppose I'd say to you right now, wherever you are, that it's going to rain tomorrow. Well, may I say to you, I'd be 50, 50% 50 chance of being right because it's either going to rain or it's not going to rain. It'll do one of the two. Now, for some of you, it probably would be accurate. Others, it wouldn't be accurate. But I'd make the statement. Now, suppose, though, I'd add to that, and I would say it'll start raining tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock, and that'll be another uncertain element. Now, I had a 50-50 chance of being right at first. Now, I have a 25% chance. Every uncertain element that is added here reduces the chance of being right 50%, you see. The law of problematical conjecture. Now, suppose that I not only say it's going to start raining at 9 o'clock, I say it'll stop raining at 2 o'clock. Well, believe me, friends, that's reduced our chances now another 50%, which brings it down to 12.5%. Can you imagine my chance of being right now? It'd be just 12.5%. But suppose you add 300 uncertain elements. And may I say that there's not a ghost of a chance of being accurate or being right. You just couldn't hit it. It'd be impossible. And yet the Word of God hit it, my friend. It was quite accurate. 
And if I even would dare to come along and having given these three uncertain elements, and then I would add another one, I'd say then at two o'clock, it's going to begin to snow. Well, I want to tell you by then, friends, there would be somebody come forward and lead me away. Probably the man with the little white coat. And he'd say, my, you need to be put away, boy, because of the fact that you are doing something that is absolutely ridiculous and something that could never come to pass. Now, the Word of God is moved into that area. That, to me, is absolute proof that this is the Word of God. There is nothing to compare to this at all. Now, I have only given very little of fulfilled prophecy. May I say to you that in the Word of God, there is prophecy after prophecy, and they have been fulfilled, and not only fulfilled, but fulfilled literally. And by the way, that gives, I would think, the method in which prophecy for the future is yet to be fulfilled. 